Shalom, giving all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha Kodash, double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone, peace and salutations unto the Akiam, the brothers, pushing this truth through the four corners of the earth in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so, now more so than ever. Shalom unto the speckled with his lights, who be scattered among the heathen, and who look like the heathen, and Shalom unto the few and faithful Akwat, listening and learning, the sisters. This is your brother Yeroshalom from the GMS Prophetic Vibrations Camp out of Trinidad and Tobago, coming back at you with another video through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai Bashim Raka Kodash. And this video is going to be entitled Financial Expert says most will take the C Ragma. Alright? And by the word C Ragma, you know, you know, you know what I mean by that. Alright? For obvious reasons, I can't spell it out, but you know, basically I'm talking about the what? The M to the A to the R to the K, that C to the H to the I to the P. Alright? You know? And this video here is full of proof. You know of, of 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 the intentions and the agenda, you know, and the what we would say, you know, and the and the plan. All right, the plan of the global elite and what they're gonna do in the months coming up, very shortly. All right, because we in prophecy. All right, all the prophecies playing out right now. This is an exciting time. All right. You know, this this next big prophecy is this year, you know, the collapse of the financial system, the collapse of the petrodollar, the US dollar, you know, which gonna herald the full collapse of America, which is Babylon the Great. Alright? This is this is prophecy. You know, this is the testimony of Yahweh Shai. Right? The spirit of prophecy. You know, and all praises to Abashim Yahweh Shai that he gave us this Holy Spirit, you know. To understand and to see the visions and to see and understand the prophecies, all right. But this was coming to pass, all right. So without further ado, let me let me play this this video here. And go into some scriptures. Was proportional to gold in the historic ratio. He said fifteen to one, and it was like four times what it is now, or five times. Um, you would have maybe a better monetary base to make trade with. So very interesting times the monetary system is collapsing a new one needs to come about and the biggest question to me is is it going to be where we the people have control of our money or are the banks going to have such control that we basically have to bend the knee to them to do anything which direction do you think it's going to go what's your gut feeling oh i know what i know what direction they want it to go <laughs> they want you know the complete control i think there'll be a battle and I do think that there'll be um, less. All right. So you heard him put it from his mouth, you know, he, they want full control, which is exactly what they want. That's their plan. Because when they when they insert that thing, you know, in, inside of you, you know, literally, they will have full control of you. And that's really what they wanted. You know, as Apostle Gabar, the elder Apostle Gabar always talks about and goes into that interview um, with Aaron Russo and Nick Rockefeller. All right, and, and um, you know the fact that uh, Nick Rockefeller, you know who was who was a friend of Aaron Russo, told them that you know that's that's the ultimate plan, that's the form of ultimate control, as as this gentleman here was saying. All right, the form of ultimate control. There's nothing you can do. It could track you, you know. They could tell what's going on inside you. They could they probably could put you to death. All right. And the point is, you know, it's a fulfillment of scriptures. What scripture? It's Revelation 13 and 16. So let me read that. Get it in my hard copy sword. So it's Revelation chapter 13 and verse 16. Alright? And he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads that no man might buy or sell save he had the mark 
or the name of the beast or the number of his name all right so that's so, so that so that's the point A scripture we all know but you know vitally important let's continue here Igris, but i'm not sure no one really so, knows so you, so you don't think people will be complacent you don't think they'll buy into the digital dollar you think there'll be a revolt very small percentage i mean there's a science fiction book a friend of mine wrote called highland and it talks about the vast majority will just go along with it. There'll just be a real subset that doesn't want to do this. So you see, the vast majority is going to go along with it. You know, which is what? Which is what? You know, going into that digital currency, which eventually going to lead to what? The, the, um, the C ragma, or the, the, the M to the A to the R to the K, right? That C to the H to the I to the P. This is where it was all leading. So he said the majority of what they will go along with it. It's on point. And this is why two thirds of Israel is gonna die. Alright? This is the reason why. This is why they're gonna die. Alright. Let's bring in um Zechariah. Zechariah. 13 and verse 8 it says and it shall come to pass that all the land say at Yahweh two parts then shall be cut off and die but the third shall be left therein right so two parts going to be cut off and die which is what the majority all right they're going to do what they're going to take that that mm -hmm. siragma and guess what they're going to be put to death through all the different types of death that the Lord is bringing and ultimately through the death by fire by the ICBM nuclear missiles Alright, because why? They put their trust in Egypt. Alright? They put their trust in Egypt. They put their trust in Babylon, which is modern day Egypt. Alright? It's Isaiah chapter 36 and verse 6 it say, Lo, thou trusted in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt, whereon if a man leave, lean it will go into his hand and pierce it, which is what talking about what? See Ragma. All right, so is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him. So it's going to go into your hand and pierce it. And there's certain punishments that go along with it. Number one punishment, and of course, it'd be that the Lord is going to, the Lord is going to put it to death, you know, with concentrated wrath. It's roughly paraphrasing in Revelation 14 and 9. All right, the Lord is going to, he's going to make, Sores boost out on your skin. Let's get at it. It's Revelation 16. Revelation chapter 16 and verse 2. It says, And the first went out and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noise, some and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which had which worship his image. Alright, so this is what you're gonna get. Alright. You know? And these two thirds, you know, they wouldn't listen, they wouldn't hear anything, you know. They, you know, same way, same way with the, with the jump shot, you know, with the, um, the juice, all right? You know what I'm talking about. You know, a lot of them may excuses, said, hey, you know, about, what about my children, my mother, my father, they have to take care of them, they have to keep their job, all right? Yeah, but hey, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord don't care about that, Lord, Lord will kill you anyway. All right, let's get, let's get, I'm bringing our scripture there, it's, it's uh, Matthew. Chapter 10 and verse 37 says, He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Alright, so if you if you if you're considering your son and your daughter and studying how to feed them and clothe them, you know, and you want to take that that C rag, same way most of a lot of you want when then took the um that V, that jump shot, alright, you know, and broke the law of Yahweh Yahshai, which is sin. The wages of sin is dead. Alright? Hey, you you true. You through. Alright, you're through. And that's the facts. Alright? Because you don't listen. You know, you didn't take heed to the men of the Lord, didn't take heed to the prophets. Alright? This is Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 12. It said, reads, for man also knoweth not his time. Right? So they, these two thirds, they don't even know the time, neither the heathen. As the fishes 
that are taken in an evil net, right? It's an evil net, it's an evil snare, a trap, all right? And as the birds that are caught in the snare, so are the sons of men snared in an evil time. When it falleth suddenly upon them, because they, gonna, they, not, they don't know where it's coming. These two thirds are so wrapped up in the world. They want Esau to continue to rule. They want, they want, they want Esau's ways, his world to continue. All right, so they they banking on that things going back to normal, you know, which you're not going to go back to normal. But this is a new order, as 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 they say, a new world order. All right, as these elites say. All right. So they're going to fall suddenly upon them, and they're not going to be prepared because they have to be prepared spiritually first. All right. Even stone up, stone up all your storehouses, they ain't going to save you. All right. Verse 13 says, This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. There was a little cry, and few men within it. A little city, Salakia, and few men within it. We're just talking about what? Jerusalem, Yerushalayim, people of the Lord. Few men within it. And there came a great king against it, right? He saw Edom, right? The elites. And besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Against what? The, the people of Yahweh Hashem, Yahushai, against his laws, his statutes, you know, proper doctrine. All right? Bringing all the wicked philosophies, the fairy, the fairy, the fairies, all right? Freaking fairies. All right? The feminism. All right, they, 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 they defile money system, the different forms of witchcraft. All right, now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remember that same poor man, right? First, he start with Yahweh Shai, and then he prophets the Lord, he made the Lord on the highways and the byways and making the videos. All right, no man remember the poor man, right? The poor usually represent Israel. All right, and this poor man was wise. All right, verse 16 says, Then said I, Wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. And this is why the Lord told us, you know, in Hosea 4 and 6. In fact, let me see if I can see if I can get that. In the book of Hosea 4 and 6, it says what? Was the four and six? It says, "My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge." All right, so they reject the knowledge of the heavenly Father, the wisdom of the poor man, the wisdom of the prophet. All right, because wisdom is better than strength, and this is why the Lord said in, in Isaiah the thirty, thirty third chapter and the sixth verse, you know, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your time. You're going to be stable in this time when you know when when you wouldn't be able to buy and sell unless you have this that thing. All right. You know, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, hated. And his words are not heard. The scripture said, if they hated him, we would be getting the gate. And it's just, it just us to mean the men of the Lord been preaching this over and over again to the head. But because they know they wouldn't listen, who say, four and six, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because they have rejected knowledge. So they reject this truth. They reject the fact, you know, what is the M to the O to the T to the B. And they reject our wisdom, the wisdom of the Heavenly Father. Because the Lord said in, in, in Amos 3 and 7, surely you will do nothing but reveal it his secrets until his servant the prophet. So this is a secret. The Lord was hiding this pretty much until now. And now it's being revealed fully what, what the intention is. But he showed it to the prophets first. And we let them know, but they rejected it. Two thirds rejected. Alright? So the Lord said, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten thy, thy power. I I will also forget thy children. So your Lord forget even the children. You know, some of them, some of these Jake's gonna eat their children and the famine that's coming up. Alright? This is what's about to take place. So jumping back to Ecclesiastes 9 and, and um, 17, it says, The words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Alright? So only the elect of the nation of Israel. The elect of Yahweh Shai are going to get this word, going to hear this word. So all the, all the fight, they fight us down. All the alg algorithm, they try to put on these videos, they leak the videos. Hey, the algorithm is just going to work to our benefit, to help the elect to get this word, to, to, to be eating this food, this spiritual food. The scripture said, the Lord said to feed my sheep. And this is exactly what we're doing. 
So we ain't dealing with the two thirds, we're dealing with the elect, the one third. Alright? So the elect, they're gonna get this. You know, because the two thirds never wanted it, they rejected it. Alright? Verse 18 said, please ask these 9 and 18. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. Alright? Wisdom is better than weapons of war. What kind of what kind of war we we, we be fighting? A spiritual war. Scripture in Ephesians 6 say we battle against we don't battle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. So we have to use wisdom. You know, weapons of our warfare again are not carnal. So wisdom and the are be, is better than weapons of war, right? Because weapons of war guns are carnal. Alright? But one sinner destroyed much good. Alright? So two thirds they know they're sinners, they don't want to change from their ways. Alright? They don't want to change from their ways. Alright, let's continue this video here. And will they have enough voice or power to do anything about it? No, they won't. They'll have to go out into the countryside and start living a rural type of a lifestyle. <laughs> and that's not going to work because Esau is not going to allow it. They're going to throw your ass in the concentration camp. Alright? And try to wipe you out. This is what's going on. Alright? Many of them, when they, when they held on the gunpoint, they're going to take the kick that M to the OTT to the B. All right. A little bit more on silver here. Uh, we saw what happened to the nickel. They're going to take it. All right. Explain us that. They're going to take it. So let me get some scriptures. Because the Lord, the Lord is going to take care of that time. All right. You're going to hold that faith. And understand that he, he he never leave you alone. Alright? This is why in the Psalms. <clears throat> let me see. We get the Psalm. Psalm 140 and 8. The Psalm of David. King David, you know, saw was prophesying at this time. Saw what's going on. It says, um, Psalm 140 and 8. Grant not, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. For they're not his wicked device. Lest they exalt themselves. Right? These devils exalt themselves. Because Matthew 6, the Lord spoke about A. You know, the lilies of the field, alright? And the birds of the air, they know they neither toil nor work. You know, yet they eat, you know, yet they clothe. In the same way, Heavenly Father loves you more than He loves them. Alright? Well, let's get Psalms 21. Psalm 21. And verse 11, it reads, For they intended evil against thee, they imagined a mischievous device, all right, which they are not able to perform. So they're not going to be able to fully perform it, right? As they're about to do it, as they're about to fill their belly, as the scripture says in Job, you know, the Lord is going to cast terrors upon them, all right? So right as they're about to do and fulfill it, the Lord is going to destroy them. And that's why you have to hold strong to Yahweh Shai. So let's, um, let me just forward this here. Uh, David, I, you know, there's one quote that really resonated with me in one of your recent pennings, uh, because I, I've been feel like I've been saying this for a long time that money has people have been losing the sense of what money really is, and you say we've reached that point. We're at a point where the more you print, the worse it gets. People trust the money or the currency less and less, and becomes worthless. Then it is perceived as becoming worthless. And that's what Babylon been doing, kicking the can down the road. No, it catched up with them. Right? No, no. Babylon is through. That's what you see greater demand than we're already seeing. We're just seeing the precursor to what will unfold. What will unfold? Well, it's a crack up boom outlined by Von Mises. People will realize, look, this dollar isn't going to buy me much going a week out or a month from now. So I'm going to buy more tuna fish, gasoline, put it in a five gallon tank. I'm going to spend it. So that creates a velocity of money that increases. It's a turnover of money. And it's a psychology. I think inflation is based more on psychology than how much money has been printed. Once people believe that their dollars are going to buy them very much, they're going to spend as much as they can. Right. It's just like on the stock market speculation. All right. Because however, whatever is the belief, you know, people act on it. However, the mind thinks. Think, you know, and this is how these devils, these elites have been manipulating the stock market for years. All right. You know, they control a significant amount. They, they pull, they, they sell stocks, they buy stock, you know, just to manipulate it. Right? The same thing with the monetary system, you know. And inflation, people, you know, and this is what they're going to do. They believe, they realize the US dollar is going to crash. They're just going to buy one spend, you know. 
because they believe the money wouldn't have any value in the future, which is true. All right, this is what's going on. Interest rates going to increase, bond prices decrease. All right, and let's continue here. Get whatever they can now instead of in the future. That's called the crack up boom. That's where we're heading right now. And of course, there's a lot of countervailing forces with the bond market, with interest rates going up and bond prices coming down. That's highly deflationary. But there's so much excess capital in the world that doesn't know where to go that a lot of it will filter into the precious metals because it is the money of last resort. And gold is an anchor of the monetary universe. It has always been that way in, on this planet, and I think it will remain that way for quite some time. That's because gold and silver is real money. As the scriptures say, gold is a defense, you know, and wisdom is a defense. But the excellency of wisdom, you know, is that it would, it's going to eventually result in salvation and immortality. It's roughly paraphrasing. All right, so gold, you know, is always been a monetary unit. And you know, this is this is what's catching up to Babylon. So where do you fit on the inflation scale then, David? Because we have some folks coming on saying we're going to see peak inflation this year. Others saying, no, we'll continue running at these levels. Where are you? Yeah, well, I'm going to get all my Austrian friends really mad at me, but I think they're both. I think you're going to see inflation in what we need, energy and food. And you're going to see deflation and stuff we don't need, like the next iPhone or a bigger big screen TV or that type of thing. So you're going to see some idea, uh, some places like even automobiles that are extremely expensive right now. The used auto market is on fire, but I think that will subside. Anything that's based on credit, which is a lot of the housing and commercial building. Right, so anything based on credit, because why, you know, they want to encourage borrowing in that time. Because people won't be borrowing, so that the interest rate's going to drop. Right, the price of these things, these things that you don't need, these wants, these luxuries, are right, going to reduce to encourage people to spend and become and become hooked in the system once again to become slaves to the system to the elite. All right, but the point is, you know, food and energy, things that you need, the price is going to go way up. And combined with that, there are going to be global shortages of it as well. So that's how the famine is going to take place. And that's what's going to create the environment for them to bring the M to the O to the T to the B. All right? You know, people are going to want to, want to, going to, want to hold gold and silver. All right? This is, what, this is what's happening. So let's close it out with a couple of scriptures. It says Psalms 37 and 7. You know, it says, Rest in your hour and wait patiently for him. Right? We had to wait till the hour shy. Rise up to the prey. Zephaniah 3 and 8. All right, fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. But man is this man is Esau Edom. All right, so don't fret yourself. Scripture talk about the faith and the patience of the saints. But in the end, the Lord is going to take them out, He's going to come and take them out. Let's get one more scripture. Let's get Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 35 and verse 3 says strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees yes stand strong all right stand strong stand strong from now you know when it, when it takes place pray and fast that the Lord is going to give it his strength to withstand the temptation in that day but it's coming soon all right Jacob's trouble is almost upon us all right verse 4 says say to them that have a fearful heart a fearful mind be strong, fear not. Behold, your God, your power, will come with vengeance. Even the Heavenly Father with a recompense. He will come and save you. And that salvation, right, is from our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. So hold strong and believe in Yahweh Shai, right? You know, this, this pestilence is, quickly, is coming quickly upon us. So hold strong and believe in Yahweh Shai. All right, so with that, I pray this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders of the great millstone. Peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect. Wa Abad Babal, destruction unto Babylon. Shalom.